since English might not be their main language, how confusing that must be. So I think that's a phenomenal idea. Any other comments or questions uh, at this point? Anything else on answers to Q&A at this point? So those are the seven budget questions that we have finished. Today we also received an additional 13 that we're currently working on. <laughs> so, so just so everyone knows. And, and let me just comment again. We, we appreciate the questions and we want to make sure we answer all of them. Um, we'll work on the 13 between now and uh, next work session um, in February. Um, if, if you have additional questions and want them answered at the work session, uh, if you could give us a week or so lead time, that would be great, um, just because that's the last work session before you, we have uh, before budget adoption. So what we'll do now is we'll take these budget Q&A. Um, these will go on the budget website uh, on, on our uh, online, so anybody can look at the questions that have been asked along with um, reviewing all of the materials that uh, we've shared with you this evening. Peter, do you... Um List the the, Q, the I know that you always have things in morning announcements, but do you specifically have a tab that says these are the school board uh, members' questions and the answers? Not in morning announcements, okay. no. But what we do is we do talk about the budget just yeah. generally, and we link the site to it yeah. on on occasion. So yeah. um, I just find it again when I was running, I did, had no idea that information was there until I was trying mm. to brush up on my knowledge, and, and I thought, wow, this. I wonder if, how many community members don't know that this mm. is so much of this information is publicly accessible. So it might be, be something interesting. Good. Okay. Um, any other last comments or questions on this one, <coughs> Ms. Dimmick? Okay, I was one of the I, I was one of those folks who sent questions in today. So my apologies, I didn't expect an answer today. Um, but I wanted to let the board know about one question I asked because I think it's worth uh, reflecting on. Um, we did uh, the the schools commissioned a, a diversity and inclusion study, and we haven't yet uh, worked through that and decided you know, sort of talked about it, digested it, and come up with a plan. But I feel that if we need money to implement whatever plan we come up with, we need to set that money aside. I'm unwilling to sort of wait till a year from now to budget in money. And I, my question was about if there were professional development funds for mandatory staff training for um, um, unconscious bias and cultural competency. I just want, I, I don't, I'm not saying that because we need to check that particular box, but I think we need to start thinking ahead to, to what we want to implement. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Bates to sort of address that because we, um, we have been, been working on that. So, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, right now, we have uh, our overall professional development budget and so we've been afforded time in our calendar where we look at professional development days at a division-wide level and so back in September we were we were able to dedicate learning division-wide to equity um, one of the things that we're going to do moving forward is continue to look at what are some specific trainings we need for staff, we've done a microaggressions and implicit bias training for all staff across the division, and you know, obviously there's some uh, cost that that um, comes along with that. But we've looked at our overall professional development budget as opposed to specific special education versus ESOL versus gap closing versus caring culture. But um, that's something that we're um, in the process of working on. We have, um, we've had discussions around an equity um, response where we're looking specifically at Dr. Williams' report and coming up with an action plan and in, included in that would be specialized professional development. But the short of it is, is that yes, we are looking at it and we're kind of taking a two-prong approach. One would be division level training, but then also working with our principals to look more specifically at um, school-based training because we, we have some staff in some schools who are in different places with their equity um, work and, and things that they've done uh, previously. So we want to make sure that everything's differentiated as well. Well, we'll respond to that in writing for sure. <laughs> Good question. Mr. Runyon. I think I'd just like to 
um, agree with Ms. Dimmick. I think that's a it, it's it's so difficult when you have a budget that you determine in advance, and then you've got to decide policy, and the policy's got to align with the budget. So one of the things that would be very useful to do is sort of look at some of the options, as I think you're suggesting, uh, Mr. Bates, and cost out what they might be so that we could at least make sure that those discretionary funds are built into the budget and we are not limited in particular actions. You know, for example, you know, I, I, I didn't get a sense from the board's discussion that we thought we had the resources to hire a specific person for a dedicated diversity and inclusion FTE. But if we did, that's obviously, you know, somewhere in the neighbor of $101,000 based on what we spend for professional people. So uh, it would be useful to have sort of a breakdown as part of the answer maybe to Ms. Dimmick's question about um, what, are the, what are the financial obligations that we might take on as a result of responding to the report. Thanks. Any other last comments or questions on this item? Anything else that folks really have a burning, burning desire to ask today? So I, I would echo Dr. Noonan and ask that if you've got questions as you're going through the book and talking to people and thinking about it, you know, having them in advance uh, allows a better response for us by the time we get to our uh, to our work session. We do have a rolling, you know, you don't have to stack them up either. Of course, obviously we uh, we can get as many in as folks want to do. It's helpful if you're um, if you're asking those questions to sort of give a, a, a conversation to other members. I think so that we're not asking the same question six or seven times. If if one does it, then we're all good. But otherwise, if there are thoughts, I don't know. I'm looking around the table to see if there's anything anybody wants to bring up right now. Okay. Not a specific question and answer, but for the next work session we have on the budget. Are we going to build in time, not just around Q&A, but for a, a discussion among the board about, you know, sort of what's above the line and what's below the line, um, where it's a, a generalized work session discussion, not, not cabined around um, budget questions and answers? We certainly can, can structure an agenda for that work session along those lines, yeah, if that's what folks would like to see. So, yeah, when we get get a little closer, we can have that conversation again. When we get to 3.05, too, one of the things uh, I'd like to share is sort of what our plan is with those things that are below the line um, to, to help hopefully provide some context uh, to that conversation if we have it. Okay, so then let's uh, move on to 3.04. The next item is sort of these, is our budget outreach dates coming up. Um, and there are two public community outreach dates that I want to make sure to highlight for everybody. It's in board docs, but we and, and we want to make sure we bring this out. On Monday of next week at 7 p.m., there's a community meeting at the TJ Library. Um, and on Wednesday, February 5th, uh, the day before the retreat, actually, I'm looking at this and thinking, there's at 7 p.m. a joint PTA meeting in the Henderson Cafe and obviously encourages uh, as many folks to attend as have uh, a desire to do so uh, and who can make it and encourage as much of the community to come as men get a chance to hear things and, and raise questions. And then um, we've got four dates that staff have identified for budget visits to the individual schools. Um, and those are listed here. So Monday the 27th, a visit to Mount Daniel. Wednesday, visits to JTP and Thomas Jefferson and also to Henderson. And then on the 30th of January, a visit to George Mason. And there's a sign-up sheet in circulation around the table so if by the end of the day we can, by the end of the meeting we can have a, a sense of when people particularly would like to go to which ones. The one thing, obviously, two members or fewer means we are, can, we have total flexibility and if we want to have more than two members, if three folks want to come, we can do it. We just need to give uh, Marty enough time to do the official notice and get that out there on the street for folks. So that's the, that's the only constraint, just make sure if we do that. And we do have enough time I'm looking at the date, I'm thinking, right, Marty, if we get you an answer back well, tonight or Wednesday, we have enough time for even Monday. And I can go ahead and post all of the dates as well, possible. Full disclosures, we, right. we did, we, we plan to post them all just yeah. to make sure we're yeah. covered. So then we're good. Okay. That was going to be my question because I was like, there's a couple of these that I would probably works better for my schedule, but there are already two people. And I know that's what we, in past, 
try to do two people, but I might. Uh, okay, but that works. Yeah, in this case, we do certainly. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and do that and, and get those noticed out there. But so if by the end of the day, bring those over and we can we can make sure we've got it all filled out. That'd be great, and then we can get ourselves scheduled for uh, for budget visits for next week. So. And again, if you've I would cost you not to be too intimidating if all like all of you show up at once. So. <laughs> all wearing dark sunglasses and uh, and standing there. Uh, and again, so Monday the twenty seventh at seven p.m. There's a community meeting in the uh, TJ Library, and on the fifth uh, at seven p.m. There's a joint PTA meeting in the Henderson Cafe. So options for folks to to reach out to the community. So that takes us then, unless there are any comments or questions on this one, to 3.05, which would be the next steps for budget. And one of them is this above the line, below the line discussion. Yeah. So um, I want to thank uh, John Brett publicly for helping us put together a, a tool that we're going to use with our staff um, to send out um, of those things that are um, below the line. Um, these are the unfunded lists. And so we are going to send it out to um, leadership across the central office, leadership in the schools as well. Um, and potentially um, CTLs, we haven't decided yet, um, to take these items and rank order them 1 to 14. Um, and then what we'd like to do is when we come back uh, at the next work session, share with you sort of what, what looked like it was prioritized um, across the division by um, leadership in the buildings and across the, the division um, to help inform the discussion more than anything. So if more money were to fall out, where, where might we want to spend it first um, so that we can at least, uh, again, sort of engage in that conversation. Um, the, next, uh, the next big step for us, obviously, is to um, answer your questions as fully as we possibly can. Um, uh, I want to uh, just, um, just say thanks uh, for sending me your questions directly um, so that I can farm those out to Kristen and to Michelle uh, and to the right people so that we get the right answers. Um, and that also helps me in some ways see what the questions are that are being asked so that we're not duplicating. Um, so I might write back to you, here's another question that was asked, does this capture what you're trying to achieve? Um, and, uh, and then uh, we'll open it up for a, a broad discussion at the, next, at the next meeting as well. So looking forward to continuing, continuing our conversation about the budget. In the end, um, you know, I, I think we've got a, a nice budget here, um, and, and perhaps one of the problems with a nice budget is that there are some competing interests um, that could be funded, and, and uh, we've shared with you what our, what our thoughts are about that, obviously, as part of the superintendent's budget, but are looking forward to continuing the conversation. Thanks, Dr. Newton. Uh, any comments or questions? Mr. Webb. I'm related. I just have a question about the uh, electric buses that we uh, put in. Who are the jurisdictions that got the, this particular round? I'd have to send you the full list, but Northern, uh, Northern Virginia was represented by Arlington, Alexandria, Fairfax. Of course. Um, and we were quite disappointed that we were not included. However, um, the good side of this is uh, they did say um, the next round will be available in the next six to eight months. Our uh, application would be uh, given first... Uh, first pass. Uh, and the other part of it, and this is where Kristen's um, sunshiny attitude is great, um, it's just a reminder that um, we'll let them deal with all the kinks and then we'll get it after all the things have been worked out that, that aren't working. So uh, p potentially. So we, we look forward to being part of the second wave. Ms. Gunn. Peter, there, there were, uh, an, along with those buses, there were a couple items that were one-offs, one and we still feel like that money will be coming. Um, we anxiously await the budget adjustment that the City Council will do. I think that there's, uh, there's been some signaling that um, it's looking very positive, uh, that the f final portion of the revenue sharing will come through, um, so we would have some one-time money to be able to spend on some of those things. Um, we still, if we do, if, if the, we really should be replacing two buses a year. Um, the bus cost that you saw in the um, one-time money was for four, um, but we really should be replacing at least two. Um, so then we just have to decide whether we want to go ahead and replace two of our diesel buses 
or do we want to not replace two and just wait? But we're trying to get on a replacement cycle for that. But there still is the need to do the work at Henderson. There's still the need for custodial supplies. Uh, and there was one other thing.